SCP-2000. We have been getting little tidbits here and there in different videos that we've watched about SCP-2000. And there's a couple of variations of videos that I see. Today we're going to be looking at SCP Explained and Deus Ex Machima. I think you, I think you pronounce it Deus instead of Deuce. I don't know, it kind of looks like Deuce, but we're going to react to it guys. Make sure to subscribe to SCP Explained. Subscribe to me if you like reaction videos and let's get into this animation. Dr. Lola Bergman was an accomplished Lola. senior researcher for the Lola, SCP Lola, Foundation. Lola. Her years of hard work studying anomalies Touch. and dedication to the Foundation had earned her a level 3 security clearance, uh -huh. allowing her to access a bevy of secret information across a the bevy. Foundation's vast network. As a bevy. researcher and a the scientist, Dr. Bergman was the naturally inquisitive type. Right. She wanted to know everything there was to know about the strange and esoteric of course, universe that's why around she's a researcher. her. That's why. When she heard about the file for SCP-2000, one of the organization's best-kept secrets, oh. she was hooked. She's the only, only problem level three, was that though. just to view the file, you had to be on the O5 Council or right. have a special <laughs> subset of level 4 clearance known as 4 uh, level 4. Unfortunately, I level five. Dr. Bergman was only a level 3, yes. but you know what they say. The forbidden fruit Think. always tastes the sweetest. Like that. Dr. Bergman had uh -huh. given the Foundation years of service. What could the harm be in breaking the rules and getting a peek behind the curtain just this Girl, once? no, they gonna somewhat fire deceptive you. Means, Kill you, Dr. Maybe. Bergman managed to get her hands on some 4,000 clearance oh credentials and decided to access Girl. the file on an encrypted no, personal device. No, don't do it. They'd never even know. But as she entered Probably the credentials, with a she found hazard, herself too. suddenly looking at an image. On its face, nothing. An image of a dirt road in a field Remember with us. tiny white text reading, Remember Us. Huh. But this was a powerful, cognitohazardous image capable of causing immediate incapacitation. The <laughs> next thing she knew, she was laying on the ground, Rip! unconscious. I it. When she woke up, she was no longer a doctor at the SCP Foundation. Look at it, didn't she kill was on the street corner, they just gave unable you some to amnestics. remember her own name, let right. alone her history. Wow. All she could do was murmur something about a secret under Yellowstone National Park. Uh, Dr. Bergman's years of service had meant Yellowstone nothing. Yellowstone National Park. SCP-2000 is an anomalous asset so vital to not only the Foundation, but the <laughs> entire world, that wow, so much as man. attempting to access it without the proper clearance leads to immediate termination. <laughs> but what's really hidden under we'll Yellowstone get. National Park? Yes, and what is And why are the Foundation higher-ups so intent on keeping it secret? Tell us even about from it. most of their own ranks. Mm -hmm. Of course, Yellowstone National Park itself is no stranger to anomalous activity. The entire national park is technically an SCP known as really? SCP-1422. Uh, While it since has been neutralized, SCP-1422 caused all members of the SCP Foundation to have no awareness of Yellowstone National Park prior to 2007. <laughs> wow. But the true nature of SCP-2000, the secret hidden under Yellowstone National Park, is not only stranger than SCP-1422, but also, depending on your perspective, either profoundly relieving or utterly terrifying. Oh my. But before you can truly understand the purpose and That's gravity reset, of SCP-2000, right? or the Deus Ex Machina, we Deus need to talk about machina. the end machina. of the world. Yeah, it's basically In foundation parlance, cloning. Right? K-class scenarios are events which have drastic implications on the state of society, normality, or even life. The most That's dangerous right. and feared of all of these are XK class scenarios, which are, for End all intents world. and purposes, the apocalypse. There are a worrying number of anomalies capable of bringing about an XK class scenario if the Foundation of, ever actually, dropped the ball on their protection or containment. Mm -hmm. While the Foundation believes that prevention is always preferable to the cure, what happens when prevention doesn't work? Right. What happens when our worst fears are realized and the end truly comes for us all? The answer mm -hmm. is. SCP-2000 happens. Simply put, the anomaly is a reset button, a chance to start over when right. all life has been compromised by anomalous activity. Right. 2000 is a giant and mysterious facility beneath Yellowstone National Park. I the entrance is disguised as a disused park ranger station, feeding into a facility that burrows miles down into the earth. Sure. It's a place that contains incredible anomalous technologies capable of bringing the world back to its former glory, mm -hmm. even after the worst happens. Only a select few personnel are allowed to work at the facility, okay. keeping its machinery maintained in case the day comes where we ever need to use it again. That's smart. These personnel are not allowed to come and go as they please, and their sure. memories of 2000 are wiped if they're ever reassigned to different Foundation duties elsewhere. Why all the secrecy? SCP-2000 is mean, the Foundation's and humanity's lifeboat. Right. And as such, the base is well-guarded <laughs> both from potential so human threats 
as well yep. as anomalous activity and reality warpers. Mm -hmm. The surface level entrance to the base is surrounded reality. by a number of strategically scary, placed man. Scranton Reality Anchors, or SRAs. Sure. These devices, largely constructed of corrosion-resistant beryllium bronze alloy, keep certain type of reality-bending anomalies from manifesting their powers within the vicinity of the base. However, these are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the state-of-the-art foundation technology employed within and around SCP-2000. Right. You probably have a lot of questions, yes. and that's understandable. What kind of technology can possibly reverse an apocalypse, and what did we mean when we said we may need to use it again? Well, yeah, listen up, it might have happened this again. is going it's to be a lot people to have take said in. Something. SCP-2000 is powered by a liquid fluoride thorium reactor, stabilized by five Zyank Anastasikos constant temporal sinks, wow. and host to the most miraculous technology of all, okay. 500,000 bright Zartion hominoid replicators. Utilizing geothermal energy from the volcanic activity in the area, the base could potentially remain operational forever if Foundation okay. staff kept up with maintenance. Gotcha. The grand majority of the space in this huge subterranean facility is taken up by building materials, construction equipment, factory machinery, agricultural equipment, and mm -hmm. computer database storage. Why? Well, yeah. let's explain the process of the apocalypse and how it relates to the activities of SCP-2000. In, in any K-class or end-of-the-world scenario <laughs> some, that doesn't destroy SCP-2000 in the process, any surviving waiting. Foundation member can enact Procedure CYA-009, while any Foundation facilities globally in? can monitor the unfolding situation. <laughs> while SCP-2000 is waiting for the all-clear to do its thing, remaining Foundation sites set in motion what is known as the Ganymede Protocol. This okay. involves collecting and preserving materials which could be useful during the recreation process. Sure. However, it's extremely or possible recreation. that in a sudden XK class end of the world scenario, like like there may relaxed. be no surviving Foundation personnel, or at least, not enough to maintain any kind of organization. Sure. Thankfully, there are fail-safe measures for such a scenario. During okay. the periods of extended inaction caused by an apocalypse that destroys most human life, SCP-2000 will gradually, autonomously, relax its security measures. Any personnel, ah. regardless of clearance, will be able to activate the like next the stage AI of the process the last video when this that we If such a thing doesn't happen for an extended period, the security measures lapse further, to the point that even the presence of an animal could activate it. This oh, would okay. set into motion Procedure Lazarus-01, humanity's last hope for survival. That's where the 500,000 bright Zartion hominoid replicators, or BZHRs, come in. These incredible pieces of anomalous technology are capable of perfectly cloning the entire human race from any given period in the last 20 wow. years, even down to their ages <laughs> and memories, thanks to Class what? G hallucinogens and developmental hypnotherapy. Class With a warm-up period of five days, these machines are capable of creating 100,000 viable, non-anomalous humans per day. Okay. The facility keeps records Not of enough. all known human alleles and is capable of recreating any lost human genomes or generating as many new and unique genomes as necessary to repopulate human That's civilization. Man. Which humans the machines generate depends on the period of time the machine is ordered to replicate. Sure. It will first reproduce prominent cultural and political figures, as well right. as the acting top brass of the SCP Foundation to sure. coordinate the recreation the effort. Yeah. The machine will then recreate, well, everyone else. You're probably wondering, if the world outside SCP-2000 has been destroyed, then what good is creating all these new humans if they have nothing to go back to? Sure. Thankfully, SCP-2000 has a contingency for rebuilding both the infrastructure, the infrastructure of, civilization of civilization as well as society, society itself. Wow. The first generation clones will have one mission, mm -hmm. rebuild, and they will have quite literally all the resources in the world to do it. In addition to having all the physical equipment for buildings and agriculture, SCP-2000 stores an immense amount of data, which is appropriate, considering the whole facility is basically a huge backup drive for life itself. Right. They have That's the entire crazy. internet backed up, as well as the sum of all human memory and a wide cultural base with copies of thousands of famous works of art, music, That's and so literature. They have all the scattered man. jigsaw pieces of the time that came before. And it's their job to put the whole thing back together. Like it's, it's expected that many of the first generation of clones will die in this process. That's fine. Takes long. With the BZHRs working at full capacity, <laughs> anyone 
can be replicated. Right. As the population increases Jeez. and spreads across the globe, rebuilding and recolonizing old settlements, population growth will increase exponentially. Sure. Once society returns to some kind of and normal, it all starts decades around after Yellowstone. the activation of Procedure Lazarus 01, it becomes the Foundation's task to restore the psychological and historical status quo. Administrators will falsify dendrochronological, astronomical, and radiometric dating records to make it seem as though history never paused. They'll then employ amnestic agent NUE5 and mass to erase and reconstruct the memories wow, of the entire rain. human population up until wow. the chosen time prior to the end of the world. As far as civilization knows, nothing like ever happened. Resets. History never stopped, and life goes on. That's crazy, it may seem comforting dude. at first to know that the ultimate contingency is out there. Even if there's a containment breach of astronomical proportions and the world as we know it ends, there's still a way out. It means that there's hope, even sure. in the bleakest situations. Right. But of course, there are always caveats. After all, if a deal seems too good to be true, then it it's safe is. to assume it probably is. Mm -hmm. Whether any of this works mm. is dependent on two factors. I hear that the all first the time is that crypto. no anomalies or human insurgents infiltrate the SCP-2000 facility and destroy the equipment within. It's okay. for this reason that True. discussion of the facility is so restricted. Zip the lips. If ever a powerful reality warper discovered and gained access to the facility, we would lose our lifeboat. Right, but there's The second anchors. factor is the it's overall integrity all, of the machines. After all, without proper maintenance, it's not hard for the technology to malfunction, sure. often to truly horrifying results. Oh. The failure of some SRA and X-AX components is believed to have caused erroneous BZHR activity. Uh -oh. resulting in the production of 10 million humanoid entities with internal biology wildly inconsistent with humanity. Oh, wow. These beings <laughs> remained unconscious for five weeks before dying. In the event of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, well-maintained machines can reproduce the human race. Sure. But all it'd take is one little malfunction to release 10 million mutants who are effectively dead on arrival. Wow. Even with SCP-2000 in our back pocket, the fate of the world still lives on a knife's edge, but in a way that's not even the most frightening part of the existence of SCP-2000. Right. Seeing as the machine can perfectly reproduce reality without leaving a trace how behind, many times has it, happened? it raises the question, how many times has this happened? Right. <laughs> you may be surprised, but the Foundation can confirm this occurred at least twice in recorded history. What? But can you ever really be sure of how many times your clone has crawled out of the BZHR? No. We received a disturbing clue to the reality of the situation when human remains were discovered on site at SCP-2000. Uh... All tests indicate that the remains are between 450 and 700 years old and have been matched to the very much alive Dr. Alto Clef, who has no knowledge of how these remains <laughs> came to be there. The only Dr. other thing Clef. found within the remains was a note, hermetically sealed in a plastic document sleeve. The note read, Why did we have to build this thing? When did we do it? How long have we been doing it? Do we even know? <laughs> and the answer? No, we don't. And for everyone's peace of mind, it's, it's probably, probably best, best to just, just forget, forget about it, if you can. <laughs> now go check out. Gosh, man, the the thought of the the most crazy thing about this is just the sheer amount. Like realistically, I'm talking about not cloning humans. Of course, that's crazy. In that kind of in that kind of speed, of course. But the the idea of storing that much data, <laughs> like. Can I have one of them hard drives, please? <laughs> Let, do some chia mining or something? You guys, SCP Explained, make sure to subscribe to him. Subscribe to me too if you like reaction videos. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Little Jen signing off. We'll see you next time.